All right, let's do this. Um, this is my setup. Uh, you know, just go over the equipment, I suppose. Uh, the front two right and left speakers is the Martin Logan Prefaces, which retail for about fifteen hundred bucks for the pair. Uh, the rear speakers, exact same ones, Prefaces. Um, the center channel is the Martin Logan uh, Motif center channel with electrostatic panel, so it's got two five and a quarter inch woofers. Uh, they're a little, uh, tweeter in the middle, and then the electrostatic panel, which, as you'll see, is completely hollow and beat behind because all it is is basically a grill, uh, two conductors with an isolator in the middle. Uh, it is active uh, in the sense of it has its own little power supply, which I probably can't see back there, but. Uh, when uh, it, it's it's electrically ch electrically charged, and as the uh, electricity jumps between the front and the back panel, uh, it, it creates uh, the audio, the sound. Um, and that one retails for about nineteen hundred bucks American. And then the sub down there is the Martin Logan Dynamo one thousand. Uh, it's twelve inch woofer, five hundred watt RMS, thousand max. Retails for about a thousand dollars US. Um, that's the old 46 inch Samsung 5 series 60 hertz it's almost two years old now it's not the greatest thing but I, threw, I thought I'd throw it on a wall mount and make this setup look a little more ridiculous even though I never use a thing uh, and then the set my new one is the 46 inch Samsung 6 series 120 hertz uh, it's definitely a world in improvement in color and smoothness and after I did what I could to get it ISF, ISF calibrated it definitely looks worlds better than the other one uh, both calibrated uh, and then uh, the rack here rack by um, uh, Combre I forget the name of the actual rack but it's discontinued but I found it for cheap um, uh, on the left is uh, three crash shell modules all retail for about 300 bucks each uh, the top two is power sensing equipment which creates discrete on off commands for devices that don't have IR codes for on off so when you want it on you're not just sending the power toggle mode which if it's on and you want it on it's just going to turn it off so to say, and vice versa uh, the bottom one's a power controlling uh, unit which I have yet to use but essentially I can control each uh, there's two outlets on the back and control it uh, uh, like a relay so to speak so I can do some funky shit with that later uh, there's the western digital uh, live plus I got it for a hundred bucks I think it's a little more than that usually uh, you can see the IR connector in the front to uh, automate it. Um, the, there's a PlayStation, nothing special, under 500 gig swap and loaded with some movies. Uh, but it does have the IR to Bluetooth adapter so it can control it, uh, power and all, which is kind of nice. Uh, in the back there, there's an 8 port neck gear switch, gigabit. Um, I had an 8 port Asus one, but it was a piece of junk. It, after about three, four minutes, like clockwork, it would hit go into like power saving mode, and the video would go all choppy, and I'd lose sound, and that's unacceptable for a media center that's mainly based on streaming over the network. Uh, Xbox 360, nothing special there, other than there's no IR emitter on the front. If you can possibly see that, because I opened it up and hit it inside, so it's a nice slick install. It looks like it's supposed to be there, other than the IR wire coming at the back. Uh, I was just going to get a power bar for it, but I saw this Balkan one that was uh, being sold cheap. I think it was 80 bucks as a stage 3 phase filter something or other for, um, uh, uh, to just keep electrical noise out of all the equipment. Uh, whether it does anything or not, uh, I, I can't tell you, but I'm not going to complain with cleaner power because that will just in turn make everything last just a bit longer. Um, on the, under is the Onkyo. Receiver HTRC 180 retail for a thousand bucks. I think it was at the time. Uh, these all these speakers are 4 ohm, and this speaker has 250 watt output at 4 ohm. Uh, and then there's the Crestron unit itself, the ADSXM. Uh, it retails for about 2,900 bucks. And so far, right now, all I use is my phone to control it. But soon I'll have an RF gateway with an MTX3 remote, which looks like a Harmony. Uh, but fully programmable, I'll have an in-wall iPod dock, uh, light switches that go through the RF gateway, and hopefully a thermostat, and I'm going to try to do motion sensor. Um, these are proficient in-ceiling speakers, these 
C640s, half decent, six and a half inch speakers with a aimable tweeter, and those will be going into the kitchen. And uh, I'm also going to put a motion sensor in the back left corner, which will turn on the lights depending on the time of day, and play some radio or something through the speakers whenever there's activity in the kitchen. I think that would be kind of neat. Uh, that light switch has got to go with the crash on one, so when I go to play music, this light will turn off. Um, this is a Procyon amp my boss lent me. I'm not using it. I tried it, but the ca uh, the cables are getting a little bit of noise, and uh, so I decided to just go back to the Onkyo. I could have got better cables, but I'll, I'll leave that for later. But this thing literally weighs 120 or 112 pounds. I think it is. It's it's bloody heavy, and it was also seven thousand dollars when it was new. Um, all right. Well, as I said, this is my only controlling device which is uh, R2 Beta, it's closed beta right now, released by some guy who hates Apple products, shares the uh, um, the thought with me I suppose, uh, but he ported it so it, it talks to the crush on you like an iPod or, iPod or iPad um, uh, and basically just emulates it. everything streamed off the crush on you did anyway so I'll go to that and it goes to connect it's current state. Listen to music. Doesn't really do anything. Well, it does something, but there's not no speakers hooked up to the amplifier like the crash on one. No lights until I get those light switches in, and no climate until I get the thermostat. In. So right now it's basically just watching TV. So here I added a scrolling menu, and as you can see, on/off states for every device. Most of them work. Um, and the scrolling menu definitely doesn't come with any stock template. Not like it was a hard thing to do, but it was still kind of a nice thing to do. Um, so, like I'll do PS3 for instance. And then obviously the uh, PlayStation will turn on with the IR to Bluetooth. The TV will obviously turn on. The Onkyo turns on and displays PS3 on the front since you can program names to every input which is kind of nice and uh, crash on receiver says that it's on PlayStation 3 which is kind of cool but right now I don't have any like the triangle or anything uh, the X all that crap program in so it's just kind of standard I can add it though uh, I'll try to get this here um, Demo something, I don't know. Dark Knight, I guess. Sure, why not? And then obviously you have your volume control. That's funny, it didn't dial out to you. Trying to reach a private. Not like it's a big deal it's or anything. Problem. No, I'm done here. Really. And I don't know if you can notice or anything, but the TV is incredibly smooth compared to the old one. And the sound system ain't bad either, but you probably can't tell anyway. Obviously, we don't want you doing anything with your hands other than holding on to your mic. It'd be nice if you were here to hear this because it is quite the experience. There's about $7,000 in audio here. <laughs> not including the crash zone. Obviously, it's not really doing anything anyway. Back on this, I can um, see how it says the PS3 is now on. I don't know if you can see that yet. Yeah, on, on, everything else is off. It should be, except the Ankyo receiver, it's hard to uh, monitor that because I tried using a pinging module and it just responds whether it's on or off, anyways. But, uh, Oh, the 360. This one has a lot more controls hey, on it. Like 5,000 volts. How no big deal, done? but and then that changes. Well, it's all on HDMI one, but I have it on there anyways. And then that goes to Xbox 360. And clearly, the 360 did not turn off. So I have to look at that.
So I decided to turn on the second time. Got an issue with that one. I'll look at it later. No big deal. Uh, once again, just control. Nothing special like this. So on and so forth. Anyways, and then the last device that I really have that I use, once again, on and on, on the PS3, did turn off. All the devices will turn off that's not in use. I probably will change that later on because the Western Digital TV, this right here, uh, takes a while to boot up. It turned on there, and as you can see, all the lights are on there, and you'll see the one top left go off with the 360. And clearly the 360 doesn't want to turn off. Not like I use the thing anyways, probably the first time in the last year I turned it on. Well, there it finally turned off. And then obviously the top left light is on. The top right is I just ran out of outlets and I have to find another one. It's the power for the IR to PS3 uh, adapter. Uh, but the, P the WD TV is on, and not, well, there's nothing really like spectacular about the WD TV. If you've already looked at it, all the network shares are there. This is my music. Well, there's a bunch of flack. This is all kind of crap. A lot of crap. Um, but I definitely grabbed a lot of stuff just to have in flack. Like this, these guys aren't too bad. And the WDTV interface is kind of nice too. Pretty slick. Anyways, crank it, although it doesn't do justice over YouTube. Once again, doesn't do it justice, but you get the point. So that's pretty much it. Other thing I didn't probably point out is the uh, wall mount, double arm, cable management, all retrofitted. Because it's not exactly my house to drill through, but I tried my best with the wire management, as you can see. And all along there, there's nothing, nothing, nothing. Nice, nice and wire clips and everything. Nice your wire under there, network cable, and then a bunch of shit up in there. And the back of the rack's pretty tidy too. And then the best part of all, this button right here, which turns off the room and thus everything else. Turns off, turns off, everything. And then the Gresham unit will say, home theater off. Lovely.